do you know anybody that would have a beef against your ex-husband? He's, um, oh, God. I hate to ask it now, but I have to do it now. You understand, right? I understand. Right? I understand. Um, he... I mean, he had friends. He was, um, he always meant well, but he would sometimes rub people the wrong way. Now to what's trending in true crime. That was just some of Wendy Adelson's police interview right after her ex-husband's death. And you can see very clearly her reaction to the troubling news. Take a look. There was a shooting at uh, your home or your, your ex-husband's home. Okay. Um, your husband, your ex-husband, excuse me, Daniel, all right, has been taken to the hospital. Um, he's not going to survive. Oh my God. Okay. Now we know that Wendy and Dan Markell had a tumultuous divorce and while her reaction could be genuine given her brother's recent murder conviction and her mother's recent arrest on murder allegations, we're asking the question this morning, might Wendy have known about the murder for hire plot to kill her husband and could she be next to be charged? Let's bring in our guest still with me, former criminal defense attorney Kirk Nurmi, jury consultant and human behavior expert Susan Constantine, and attorney and creator of the Jury Trial Mentor YouTube channel, Carl Steinbeck. Good morning to you all. Wonderful to have you along with us. Susan, my friend, I want to begin with mm -hmm. you, please, and what you saw analyzing mm -hmm. Wendy Adelson there just now. Well, first of all, when she was asked the question is that what you notice is that when your forehead, there's no movement, but she's shaking her head. Yes. Before the actual question. So she was already anticipating the question. And then on top of that, what I'm looking at is her forehead movement and, you know, respectfully, she's got Botox. So she doesn't really uh, show that emotion correctly but so I'm looking at the bottom region <clears throat> of her face and when she's crying it does look like an authentic cry but she could be crying for all different reasons but what I'm looking at is when she realized what that question was she was already waiting for it then she's now going into reaction mode now she's going then she goes into management which means the performance so when I'm looking at this, there is a duration within that one second period, formula stimulus, and there was a cluster there. It's three different things we're looking for in three different channels, right? Two different two different areas within a seven second period. So it's called the three, two, seven. So in my opinion, she knew. Oh, Susan, this is good. I've got another clip for you to look at in just a couple of minutes. I want to go to Kirk and Carl next and see what they think about the chances of Wendy being charged. Kirk Nermi, what do you say, please? You know, Julie, I remember when Charlie was on trial and we saw Wendy on the stand and, and all her, her testimony couldn't be used against her in prosecution, future prosecution. The questions, the evidence behind those questions that were posed by the prosecutor made me believe that Wendy would be charged right after Charlie was convicted, but she hasn't yet. So to me, and we're here, we're weeks out away, we're weeks removed, right? And now Donna has been charged, her mother, but not her. And it makes me wonder now, if, why? Why not? Why haven't the prosecutors moved? And to me, the only logical <coughs> conclusion you can make off that is they don't feel that they have enough evidence. So I'm beginning to wonder if something's going to need to change, you know, like with Donna, one of those jailhouse phone calls that she had with Charlie, something of that nature that would move the case forward because there'd be no other reason for prosecutors not to charge Wendy at this time. I'm with you, Kirk. Carl Steinbeck, last but certainly not least, I want to get your take on Wendy, please. 
Well, it has taken a long time to go after the Adelsons. It's been way too many years. But there's a new prosecutor there at Tallahassee, Jack Campbell's, as of 2016. And he's unleashing these prosecutors to go after the Adelsons. And every time Wendy is used to testify, there is a conviction. So they've used her every time to get a conviction against others. And every time she does testify, she comes across terribly. And she has actually shown that she has, is involved in this and had prior knowledge. In fact, at the closing argument of her brother's trial where he's convicted of murder one, she actually accused her of uh, framing the boyfriend to be the fall guy to take, take responsibility uh, by the police and law enforcement and to be falsely accused of murder of her ex-husband. So she was totally involved in this. In fact, there's well over 100 indicators of the things she's done that circumstantially prove she had prior knowledge and was also doing things during the day of the murder, as well as the days after that show that she was absolutely part of this family hit job. Mm -hmm. I'm with you, Carl. Uh, one of the things that really troubled me, and we've got a clip that, uh, Susan, I'd love for you to analyze next, is where she's asked about how coincidentally she's driving by the homicide scene on the day of. And, and, and when I heard it at trial, I thought, pants on fire. And now we get to see her reaction when she talks about it with police. Let's watch together now. <laughs> Let me, let me get over this hump, okay? Can we do that first? All right. Can you tell me what time you left your house this morning? Yeah, it was there. Um, I didn't leave this morning. I didn't leave until noon. Okay. Let oh, me. my God. And I tried to drive up Triscott, and I saw that it was blocked. Uh, it was blocked at some point. At, I'm not sure what time it was blocked. And I just thought, oh, there's maybe some trees down or something. Susan Constantine, what do you think? So when I'm watching her expressions and, and in my line of work, you know, there's 27 different indicators that I'm looking for that are associated with deception. And there's timing in it. There's the duration between the emotions. And when I'm watching her performance, she's very high in the chest right here. That's hyperventilation. Why would she be hyperventilating when it's right down here in kinesthetic? This is the emotion part of you. She, the sadness comes from here, not hyperventilation. This is fight or flight response. So when, you, when I'm watching that very fast, rapid breathing, and then the facial expressions being uh, uh, stretched to the side, and you'll notice that they don't turn down, she's not showing genuine sadness. And the fact that she's got Botox in the front, you can't see the corners turn up. But I would naturally see more movement in her bottom region of her face that she was sad or remorseful or concerned. And I don't see it. It doesn't connect. And when it doesn't connect, it's, there's a reason for it. Susan, thank you for all of that. Ooh, now we know Charlie Adelson is locked up for the rest of his life for his help getting rid of Professor Dan Markell, the father of Charlie's two nephews. Now, Charlie was sentenced just last week and still maintains his innocence. But no one from his family spoke out on his behalf. What do those things tell you? Now, according to a joke call between him and his mom, Adana, his own sister doesn't even ask about how he's holding up. We know you never asked anything about your brother. This is 8 o'clock last night. But we just got off the phone with him, and the first thing he asked was, How's Wendy holding up? I didn't have the heart to tell him that you never called us or asked about him. I just said, we weren't up to phone calls right now. Everyone looks to protect you. I bet you've got a lot to think about. So she says this morning, I thought she'd be racing over here last night. Dear mom, I know you are upset by the verdict, but the anger directed at me is not justified. I'm not responsible in any way for Charlie's situation. I am not guilty because I did not do anything wrong, and I was not involved in any way with Danny's death. Also, as you know, my, I do know, my lawyer has advised me not to talk to my family or anyone else about this case. Oh, seems like Sister Wendy's giving her family the cold shoulder. Do you think Charlie regrets his actions? I mean, think about it. Who stood to gain the most from this homicide? As sick as this plot was, who stood to benefit the most? Wendy. Wendy. And then maybe Donna and Harvey. Charlie probably, I would argue, stood to benefit the least in this. Do we think he's got regret? Let's bring back in our panel. Kirk Nurmi, what do you say on this, please? 
Boy, it's hard to say, Julie, what's really going on in his head. You think about the demented thinking that led him to where he's at. What thinking process is he using now, right? But, you know, there's an arrogance and hubris about this entire family with what they did and the way they have operated them with, you know, with impunity as it relates to uh, the father of their grandchildren or, or their, their nieces. So, um, you know, in that regard, he probably does. Charlie probably still feels like he's innocent in some way and doesn't regret it like he didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And right now he has hope. Hope's a valuable commodity to people that are in prison. So I bet I wouldn't be surprised if he's thinking, oh, this is going to get overturned on appeal. No problem. This is just a little setback. When in reality, once that hope is taken away, then I think there'll be space for regret. Mm -hmm. I like how you put that, Kirk. Carl, what do you think about Charlie? Does he have regret? I don't see any regret from him right now. What I see him doing is deflecting and pointing the fingers at other people who are responsible for where he's at. So if you listen to all, all these recordings that they've uh, released in the last few days, what he's really doing is uh, pointing the finger at the prosecutor, saying that she didn't have any evidence. She had this graphic presentation during the closing argument that was absolutely brilliant and tied it all together. And he's saying that none of that was evidence. It was all just texts and emails and it just cherry picked stuff that uh, appealed to the jury who he basically was saying was dumbed down to a third grade level and all the good jurors got uh, kicked off by the prosecution. <clears throat> he's also blaming somewhat his sister now too. He's saying that Wendy's testimony, what he's saying things like, what are the odds she drives on Trescott within an hour of the murder? A reasonable juror is gonna look at that and go, this doesn't make any sense. And he's saying a lot of stuff like that. So he's already starting to like, really, really target his sister as well, which is really interesting. Mm -hmm. And I know those prosecutors right now probably have the headphones on listening to those jail calls. Uh, Susan Constantine, take us home quickly before we hit that break. Do you think Charlie's got regret? I don't think he's got regret, but what I see is a high level of stress and worry. And I also see a lot of cognitive load. So as he's hearing um, testimony, what he's doing, he's, he's trying to figure out in his mind how he's going to use that information to create his storyline around it. So I think he's creating, a, he's carrying a lot of information in his brain. That's why we see the cognitive load, but I don't see sadness and regret it from him at this point. Oh, your insight is fantastic. Susan Constantine, thank you so much. Kirk Nurmi, big thank you to you as well. We have to say goodbye to you both. Carl's gonna come along with us as we talk about what is tipping the scales in the Bryce Rhodes case. But when we come back right after this, we're gonna get some more insight into the big announcement that Stephen Smith's phone has been unlocked. The Smith family attorney, Eric Bland, is joining us live on the program to respond to the claims that the phone's been unlocked for years. Plus, we're gearing up for court to start back up in Kentucky for the murder trial of this guy, Bryce Rhodes.